homework time, yes? Hep, 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 homework time is here yet again. Lesson 28, let's do it. All right, let's start by jotting our name down at the top of the page. I'll write my name, you write yours, and then let's write down the date, too. All right, today you write the actual date. Our instructions. A group of students measured the lengths of their shoes. The measurements are shown in the table, and here it is. Let's take a quick moment because all of tonight's homework has to do with this table. All right, so we have students, we have a list of names, and then we have length of shoe in inches, and we can see, let's take a moment because we're about to make a line plot to display the data. Let's look at the range of values we have. In other words, what's the smallest and largest numbers we have here? If we look down, what's the smallest one? It's seven and a half. Okay, so that's our smallest. So I'm just gonna mark this with a little star there. So I remember that's my smallest value. And let's look up and down. What's our largest value? Obviously it's gonna be eight and something. Yep, there it is. There's eight and three quarters is our largest. So when we go to make a line plot, which is basically a glorified uh, number line, um, just with some X's on top of it, we, we can figure out what the range of our uh, number line will be based on the largest and smallest values. So what I mean by that, let's draw out this little number line here. We see seven and a half is our smallest value. We could actually make that our starting point here. Um, we could go down to seven. And we see eight and three quarters is our largest. We could make that our largest value. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to go from seven to nine, though. And uh, here's why. So let's make seven down here and then nine at this end. And you'll see right away why I think so, because then we could place eight right in the center here. And what's gonna go halfway between seven and eight, but seven and one half. And that of course is our lowest value. And what's gonna go smack dab between eight and nine? That's right, eight and one half. And while we're on this roll, I think we can, we notice our other values are all quarters. So let's mark out our quarters. We just bisect the halves to make quarters. Um, we can label this one, although we know we won't need it, but so that's seven and one fourth. I'll tell you, that's better. Okay, and then this would be seven and two fourths, also known as seven and a half. So this would be seven and three fourths. Now here's eight, eight and one fourth. Eight and a half is equal to eight and two fourths, right? So eight and one fourth, eight and two fourths, eight and three fourths. Now, this so far is a number line and not a very useful one at that, but now we can make it a line plot by uh, marking how many of each value we have. So let's start at the bottom, work our way up. And so we have seven and a half is our smallest value. All right, so all I have to do is put an X here say, hey, there's one value. I could use some other shape or something, but in Eureka land, they have us using X's and that's cool. So that means I have one value of seven and a half. All right, and what I'm gonna do here as well is I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna put a little X here so I know that I took care of that one, okay? There's just for myself there. All right, now next up, the next value is seven and three quarters, right? How many of those do I have? I have one, and then another, and then another. So one, two, three measures seven and three quarters. So one, two, three X's shall it get. Do I have any that are right at eight? Yes, indeed I do, just the one. So I'm gonna X that off there and place the X on the line plot. That's what makes this a line plot, by the way, is are these symbols here, in this case the X's that stack up to show how many of each value we have. Uh, do we have any at eight and one fourth? Nope, so we'll skip up to eight and one half, and I have one, two of those, so two at eight and a half, 
and you see why I'm Xing them off on the table so I know I don't miss anything. And then I have Mary at eight and three quarters. You go, Mary. Join that basketball team. All right, so there we are. I'm done with number one. So what I'll be doing is I'll copy and paste this uh, line plot onto the next example so that you can see it because we need it to answer the questions coming up. So let's do that. Let's go on to number two. So in 2 A and B, we need the table, but not our line plot just yet. Uh, solve each problem. Who has a shoe length one inch longer than that guy? Can we pause for a moment? Eureka people, what are you doing using a name like that? Have you never been around fourth graders? Whew. Anyway, that guy has a shoe length of seven and three quarters. So what's one inch longer than seven and three quarters? Well, although you can probably figure this, you know, we can say, you know, plus one equals eight and three quarters. Sorry, I'm all zoomed in here, so it's all pixelated. So who has a shoe length of eight and three quarters? Well, fortunately, that's only one person. That's our darling Mary. And by the way, what I've written over here, if you write that on the table, that would demonstrate to your teacher that you're not just guessing or copying, but you actually can say, hey, I did the math. Here it is. Who has a shoe length one inch shorter than Susan's? Well, here's Susan. So eight and one half minus one. Well, we don't have to really touch the half, right? We just take away one from the eight, and so it's seven and one half. So who's at seven and a half? Well, fortunately, again, there's only one person. That would be good old Benjamin. So that is Ben. And believe it or not, we are done with number two A and B. Let's go on to the rest of number two. And here in C through H, lemon ginger. Uh, we just have a bunch of questions to answer. Again, not about the line plot uh, yet, but about the, the table. So you see I have that copied here so we can refer to it. How many quarter inches long is Martha's shoe length? Well, she's seven and three quarters, right? Okay, so Martha is seven and three quarters. Now, this is actually a little tricky. But so how many quarter inches are there in seven and three quarters? Well, think about it this way. If we were to take those seven inches, right, how many quarter inches are in there? Well, each of those has four quarters, right? So that would be, I mean, there are a couple ways we could do this, but I'll show you one way. We could say, hey, we know there are four quarters in each of those seven inches. So seven times four is 28. And then we have another three quarters, right? And what's that? Yeah, 31. So we can say seven and three quarters is the same as 31 quarters. And you could do this another way. You could, you could draw this out and count up the number of quarters. This is a way that makes sense to me. So it is 31 quarters, or you could just say 31 quarter inches long. So what is the difference in inches between Lilius's and Martha's shoe lengths? So Lilius is eight, and Martha is seven and three quarters. And we see, what is the difference? I mean, come on, we're pretty clear we're subtracting here. Uh, eight minus seven and three quarters. Anyway, there's... Again, a bunch of ways we can go about this, but look, if I were to just make an oh-so-simple number line so that your teacher can see that you're really doing the work here, there's seven and eight. Halfway between is seven and a quarter. And then here's Martha's seven and three quarters. And if I were to draw a little arrow, and look, you're like, oh, I have to draw a number line. What is this taking us, 20 seconds? All right, I see that, hey, if I go up one-fourth of an inch... That gets me from seven three quarters to eight. So the answer is one fourth inch is the difference. So now let's compare the shoe lengths of Ben and Francis using greater than less than equal to. So Ben is, look at the table, he's what? Yep, he's seven and a half. And we'll leave a little space there and write Francis seven and three quarters. Again, I, I'm pretty certain at this point you can look at that and know what it is, but hey, if we were to prove it, 
Make a draw a simple little number line. And again, this will take 20 seconds. Just do it. Suck it up, kid. All right, half point is seven and a half. Here's what? Seven and three quarters. And guess what? This is identical to the number line we just drew. And so we could see, look, here's seven and a half. Here's seven and three quarters. We could see that seven and one half is less than seven and three quarters. Wonderful. How many students had shoes that measured less than eight inches? Okay, well, I'm going to change colors for this so I can mark up my chart here in a way. And if you have a colored pencil handy, as I recommend, uh, you can do this with me or do, just do it in regular pencil. So less than eight inches. Okay, so not Colin. This guy, not saying his name. So I'm going to, here, I'll underline their name. So he has less than eight. Seven and a half is less than eight, right? Seven and three quarters is less than eight. Now, uh, with Lilius here, is eight less than eight? Uh, no, it's equal to, right? So we will not count Lilius. Obviously, Susan's eight and a half. Francis is less than eight. And Mary is clearly more. So switching back in black. Um, so how many students have shoes that measure less than eight inches? One, two, three, and four. So our answer would be four students. You want to give more of a complete answer. How many students measured the lengths of their shoes? Well, all of them, right? So how many students do we have here? Well, I'm going to go ahead and number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is eight students. I know some of these questions, like, they can't even come up with good ones. They're like, uh, I don't know, but maybe you wouldn't. Yeah, maybe so you missed that. All right. Mr. Jones, who's he? I don't know. He came out of nowhere. He just walked in the room with these eight kids, and he's like, I can measure my shoes too. His shoe length was 25 half inches. Mr. Jones, what kind of ruler are you using? Anyway, 25, 25 half inches. 25 halves. Inches? Use greater and less than or equal to compare the length of Mr. Jones' shoes to the length of the longest student shoe length who had the longer shoe. So he is 25 halves. All right, well, obviously we want to put that into a mixed number before we do anything because that's our point of comparison. And there are a couple of ways we can do this. If you were to skip count by twos, you could get all the way to 24, right? All right, and still have some. So we could say that 25 halves is 24 halves and that other 25th, that other one half, right? Now, think 24 halves. Well, what's 24 divided by two? It's 12, there you go. Remember, fractions express division. So we could call his shoe size 12 and a half, or his shoe length, rather. And now we're gonna compare 12 and one half to the longest student shoe. Who's the longest one here? Well, we had noted that at the beginning. It's Mary, uh, basketball Mary with eight, and three quarters. And now we're going to do as the instructions say and use greater or less than equal to. Obviously, 12 and a half is greater than eight and three quarters. I don't think we need a number line to prove that. So this is greater. Who had the longer shoe? Mr. Jones has the longer shoe. Go, Mr. Jones. Golly, we're all done with those. We just have uh, number three to wrap things up here. Uh, let's do it. Well, don't you know that time may change? Okay, number three. Using the information in the table and on the line plot, which I've copied here for our ease of reference, write a question you could solve by using the line plot. So I just put the line plot here because the information in the table is here on the line plot. And then solve that question. Okay, so you could do a lot of things here, okay? You can do a lot of things. But the purpose of line plot is to show how many data points you have in each region. And so you can write any sort of question here again. What I'm going to do is not the right answer. It's just to give you an idea of something you could do. So what I want to do is I want to look at how many are eight or more and how many are less than eight. So my question will be how many, and, and if you take a look, uh, I, I can do it not as a, with a question, but as a, as a directive. So compare, here's my question, the number 
of students. And again, I'm a little pixelated because I had to zoom in here, so forgive me. Students whose shoes are, and I'm going to use the mathematical symbol here, greater than or equal to 8 inches to those less than 8 inches. And I'll put comma using greater than, less than, equal to, period. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a comparison. That's, that's mine. And so when I look at eight or more, okay, that's going to be these jobbies here, right? How many students fit those data points? There are four. I'm on to the solving part. Um, right there, solve. You have to answer your own question. And here are those who are less than eight, and we see again there are four. Well, I did that on purpose. And so we would say that four equals four. There are an equal number of students who are less than eight and greater than or equal to eight inches. Um, the one thing you want to make sure when you write your question, and again, mine is just an example of the kind of thing you could do, is that there's one definite answer. It can't be like, which student got big feet? You know, it, 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 it can't just be like uh, broad or, or open to interpretation. It has to be something that's very clear, like so I defined here. Uh, what could have gone wrong in this phrasing is if I said, greater than eight compared to less than eight because we have a value of eight. So eight is neither greater than or less than eight, you see. So you have to be careful that there's just a very clear one answer to whatever question you come up with. But nevertheless, once you've done that, you have completed another homework time. So I'll see you yet again. Once again, it is again homework time. Yeah.